Hi guys, and welcome back to our channel. Going to this in the background, <laughs> trying to annoy me. <laughs> Do you see him? This is the foolishness. Are you playing, are you playing hide and go see? <laughs> so today is the day where I'm going to the salon to get my hair all the way together. I know some of you are wondering like what's going on. My hair is extremely dirty and it needs some help, okay? So I'm going to get a silk press Maybe just straighten. I don't know the difference. But anyway, I'm going to get it straightened so that I can get my hair sufficiently trimmed. I'm hoping that this is going to be a good experience. I am very nervous because I've had some challenges in the past. But I'm believing for the best. So if you would like to see how my hair turns out and what the results are, stay tuned. And she's gonna help to get my hair all the way together. We're struggling right now. I'm a little bit nervous, but she's gonna help me out. So we'll see how this goes. So today I'm getting my hair straight in. We, we said not bone straight, right? Right. Not bone straight because I want to prevent any extra damage or breakage. So yeah, we're gonna get started and we'll see how it goes. Demi, what is the difference between the semi permanent and the demi permanent? Okay, a semi permanent. Um, deposits color but it's a temporary rinse mm -hmm. and a demi is closer to a permanent but it's not permanent because it does not have the peroxide that um, that actually lightens the hair mm -hmm. it only deposits color but it's a deeper color that actually attaches better to a natural hair texture semi-permanent attaches better to a relaxed hair texture okay all right so we'll go with the demi okay and my hair is very dirty <laughs> for me to get past 12 inches because it just gets stuck there. The thing about hair growth is um, most of the time you have to go by what your hair was like as a kid. That's why I asked you how long was your hair as a kid. Yeah. So we try to get our hair to grow to a certain length yeah. and grow past a certain length but if we've never had that hair and this is if it was healthy as a kid because a lot of times even growing up our hair is not healthy. Depending on what happened, you know, what we were going through, what we were doing, yeah. with our hair. We may not have had healthy hair even as a kid. But at your healthiest point, how long was your hair? I think about 20 inches. Okay, so that's probably that's probably the length of your hair. Okay. Is that the is that the length that it was in that picture that you showed me? Well, in that picture, you know, because I had just had my kids, so it was like in that year window. Uh huh. So um, I think it may have gotten to like 13, 14. Okay. But that was when it was in its growth phase. Gotcha. So um, so you you will be able to get back to that. Okay. The thing is, like as we get older, things change. Hormone. So exactly, our, our hair may not grow as quickly and may not grow at all like it used to because we're just at a certain age and our body is different. Doesn't mean that your hair can't be healthy, it can be absolutely healthy, but as far as being able to grow to a certain length, you may not get there. Yeah. But I definitely wanted to be a lot fuller. Mm -hmm. And I feel like because I used to always, like we talked about before, I used to always get those braids. My edges, mm -hmm. they're really thin. Mm -hmm. So with that area, um, you just want to make sure that as you are, especially when you're wearing wigs and stuff, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you are caring for, um, for your edges in that time, that you don't want to be you know, have too much pulling, too much tug, and you don't want to cause any type of, you know, traction, alopecia, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, not a whole lot of stress on your scalp. Not a whole lot of, um, even with trying different products, you got to look at the ingredients. You don't want to use a lot of drying products. If you notice that a product is drying your scalp out, 
and try not to use that as much. Try to okay. add product that's going to add moisture to your hair. Make sure that you're massaging your scalp too. I have got to start doing that. <laughs> I'm the worst with massaging my scalp. Does that really work though? Because I feel like it's a it bit of a placebo. But people say it works, but it works. Okay. It works. And the reason why it works is because it stimulates your scalp. It stimulates the, the blood flow in your scalp, okay. which creates um, more sebum, which is your natural oil coming oh. from your body into your hair. Okay. Natural oils is better than artificial oils that we apply on top of the hair. Okay. And which oil would you say works the best? It depends on your hair type, your hair texture. I think I have low porosity. And the condition of your hair. Um, so I like um, a mixture of oils. And it really depends on the person's hair type. That helps me to choose which type of oil that I'm going to use. Okay. So it's a mixture of essential oils. I'm not one that's just going to go and pick up you know, coconut oil and say only use coconut oil for your hair. Uh -huh. No, I think everybody needs to use a mixture of oils that's going to um, produce the level of moisture that it needs, mm -hmm. the level of shine that it needs, the level of treatment and care that it needs. And I love olive oil. Mm -hmm. I love, um, like I love many, many different types of oil. How about avocado? I've heard a lot about avocado. Is that I haven't done a lot of research on avocado oil. Okay. Um, I haven't. One of the products that I use does does have avocado oil in it, mm -hmm. but I have not done a lot of research on that one. Okay. Um, How about castor? Grape seed. Grape I love. Seed? I use grape seed. I love grape seed. I okay. love castor oil. Um, jojoba oil. I love that. Okay. Um, and like I said, it just really depends on the hair type and the hair texture on what we really use. Okay. So it's not a specific oil. It depends on the hair type. It really depends on the hair type and the hair texture. Okay. And, and the condition of the hair because what you don't want is to you know, put a whole lot of um, oils on a person's hair if the hair is already naturally oiled. Mm -hmm. Because you're only causing buildup and nothing else. Nothing oh, else is happening. But mine is naturally dry. So how often do I need to oil my scalp? You actually should not even have to oil your scalp if really? you're doing all of the right things to your hair. Oh. If you're doing all, all of the, you're eating healthy, you, <laughs> did you shake your head? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I gotta do better. <laughs> So you want to make sure that you're eating healthy, uh -huh. drinking plenty of water, get that water in because water. that's important. Mm -hmm. um, you want to also make sure that you're getting your ends trimmed on time because your ends, getting your ends trimmed, so many people are afraid of getting their ends trimmed, but getting your ends trimmed is actually the healthiest thing that you can do for your hair. Then why would you say that? Because it helps you to receive the oil in your hair and it stops the, the damage. Anytime you get split ends, uh -huh. if you don't trim those split ends off, it actually goes up the shaft which, yeah, causes, which causes that thin area of hair so a lot of times anytime you actually hold your hair up and I can do this section here before I add your color on mm -hmm. but if you hold some hair up yeah take a piece of hair if you hold this hair up and any hair that you can see through is better when you do it dry any hair that you can see through is probably needs to be cut off okay yeah so most of the time it happens when you're not getting your ends trimmed on time Okay. So, uh, try that when the hair is dry. Okay. How often would you say we need to trim our ends? Eight weeks. Eight weeks. So because of the because of how our hair grows. Every okay. Eight weeks. We should be looking at our our ends and making sure that we're cutting out anything that's dead, anything that's split. And see, that's the hard thing for me because I'm trying to hold on to any type of length I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for some reason, it just makes us feel like we're thriving or we're doing something. Yep. We're maintaining growth. I guess not. So if you actually trim your ends on time and trim them when you see those split ends, uh -huh. you're only trimming just the very nip of the hair. Okay. You're not really going into it. So if you wait too long, that's when you got to start trimming inches off. But then a lot of people say when you trim your ends, you cut off what you've grown. Is that true? No. Okay. No. You're not because your hair grows from the root. You're okay. trimming your ends off. You're trimming that old hair that's been there for a long time. Okay. So eventually all of this hair is going to come off because you're getting new hair in. So that's why it's important to eat healthy and to drink plenty of water and to massage your scalp. So anything that's coming through your scalp should be healthy.
Okay. That's what you want to grow. That's what you want to focus on. Sometimes we do the opposite. We're so busy trying to make sure that we're taking care of the hair mm -hmm. and we're not paying enough attention to the, the scalp. scalp. And the scalp is where we want that to be healthy. So the hair that comes through there is what's, what grows and grows out thick and healthy and in the right condition, you know, okay. that, that we really needed to, to have so that as these ends are being cut off, mm -hmm. That's all gonna go away, and that new hair that's coming in is gonna all be what you want it to be. Okay, so the scalp is like our soil. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I think so that's just, the part I'm missing. I yeah, gotta so start just, massaging my scalp. Yep. So just think about, you know, even when building the house, you want that house to be built on a firm foundation, mm -hmm. right? So you don't want anything that goes on top of that foundation to damage the actual base, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The base is your scalp. Okay. Which should be firm, which should be healthy, which should have all of the nutrients and everything that it needs so that everything that, that goes on the hair that's already on there does not damage it, does not make it worse. Okay. Everything that you put inside of your body is going to go to your hair first. Oh, it does. Through your scalp. Huh. So I got to eat some more vegetables. Eat some vegetables. <laughs> Drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I definitely have to increase my intake of vegetables. Yeah, so, you know, um, even when, if, I don't know if you've ever heard of it before, but if you think about years ago when um, Britney Spears, like she's really heavy in the news right now, but uh -huh. um, remember one time when she cut all her hair off? Uh -huh. It's because of her drug test. Okay. She didn't want um, things to be found in her blood, you know, in her, in her testing when they did her drug test because they use patches of hair. Really? And that's because everything that you put in your body goes to your hair to first. To your hair. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. I never thought about it like that. Yep. Everything goes to the hair first. Because I do pretty good with fruit. Mm -hmm. I just have to eat more vegetables. Yeah. Well balanced is what you want. Okay. And it seems like my front seems to be very thin. Mm -hmm. The back does okay, mm -hmm. but it's hard for me to grow thick, healthy hair in the front of my hair. Mm -hmm. Is that so? What's, what do you think it's called? It's still, it's still from um, when you when it had broke off before, or you know you had the shedding before around your edges. Mm -hmm. um, I think you said was it braids or braids yeah, and twists, braids and twists and stuff. So that was. Probably, and um, more than anything, was probably traction alopecia. Mm. So the thing about traction alopecia is it pulls, sometimes surface based, but most of the time it actually goes beneath the scalp and it's pulling mm. from the follicle. Oh. As long as that follicle is not damaged, the hair will grow back. Okay. You know. And so hair, if I start massaging it more, yep. I should see. You're strengthening. You're strengthening your scalp. You're strengthening those follicle areas. You're strengthening everything there so that the hair actually can come through. Okay. And when it comes through, it comes through healthy. Okay. How often do you think I should do a scalp massage? I would do it at least three times a week. Mm. Yeah. For and how long? Well, as long as you feel like it. As long okay. as you're using your the ball points of your fingertips and your fingers are not dry and rough. Okay. And what I mean by that is, like, some people have really dry hands. And oh. you may not, you don't look like you have dry hands, but some people have really dry hands. And if you have dry hands, it's actually going to cause damage on your scalp. You're going to cause scarring oh. on your scalp. And you don't want to cause, you know, scarring from your hands on your scalp. Don't use a tool. Don't use, like, a comb. Oh, uh -huh. Exactly. Like, some people, there's a new thing out where you can actually... It looks like a claw, and you put it down. Yeah, I have that. You have it. Don't use it. Oh, like, <laughs> okay. Don't use it. So, um, so you, it's better to use your fingers. It's better to use your fingers oh. because you're allowing the natural oils from your skin to actually help oh. with bringing that, um, you know, the oil up to the top yeah. of the surface. <laughs> I think we just get so excited and about these new tools. All these new tools. <laughs> and these tools are scratching and scarring our scalp. Oh. No, don't use them. Okay. <laughs> I guess I could just, while I'm enjoying a good show, start massaging yep. my scalp. Massage your scalp. Well, get your husband to do it. Just even <laughs> rub my scalp. And just do a small round circular motion. Circular. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's good. And you don't have to put like a whole bunch of product on there or anything. Okay. You can put some oil on your hands and then start massaging your scalp. 
but that's not necessary for every time that you do it. Oh, I don't have to have You don't have to okay. or you can just use your, your hands and just go down there and massage your scalp. And actually, it'll feel good. If you ever have a headache, just try massaging your scalp and see. Don't you notice a difference? Okay. I think that's what I'm missing because I'll massage my scalp maybe twice a month if uh -huh. I take count. Uh huh. But I'm never consistent with that. Gotcha. And then, and that well balanced diet and, you know, not having so much pressure on the scalp, especially around the edges, that'll help too. Okay. When you're wearing your wigs, are you wearing okay. a cap underneath? I know sometimes. I do. Do, like do those break off your hair, the wig caps? All right. If the wig cap is not too tight, like sometimes you, they have those wig caps that has like a, a band. A band, uh huh. Those can be too tight sometimes. It okay. has like a, a spring band. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can be too tight. Okay. Uh, just make sure that it's not too tight and it's not staying on too long. Okay. Yeah, so you want to make sure you manage the time that you have those on. Um, if you're doing a lot of lace, lace fronts and stuff like that, you do have to know that sometimes that does cause traction alopecia as well mm. because of that glue. Yeah. Yeah. So that can be. And, you know, some of the ways that some people have gotten around that is to pull their wig further down. It just does not look natural. On their to forehead. Me. I hate no, that. don't do I that. I hate that. It does not look natural. Or you use the got to be glue that I use. You use that got to be glue? Because you just spray water and it'll come right off. No. Oh, okay. I think I put too much this time. Okay. And Mr. Shadow was like, <laughs> that stuff did the job. <laughs> it did what it was supposed to do. <laughs> too much. Oh, my goodness. I think I put too much this time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> It was down. <laughs> <laughs> my hair was not moving. <laughs> Alright guys, so all the color has been added. My hair has been washed. And you can see how much shrinkage I have. My hair shrinks quite a bit. So we're going to see how long it has grown and what's going on under here. is the moisturizer that we can use to spray on our hair instead of water right mm -hmm. it's, a, it's called satin tame by deca plus and it's a moisturizer it's a it's a hair strengthener it's a conditioner and it can be used as a leave-in okay it can be used as a detangler and you can use it on wet or dry hair is this one affordable it's definitely affordable the um i have to look it up but i know the small one is like eight dollars and this one is like twenty dollars, but I'll, okay. I'll look it up before you leave. <laughs> i
Making sure that your tools are in good condition. Mm -hmm. Making sure, like, you know, you start having combs and stuff that have broken teeth on them. Mm -hmm. It's time to let them things go. Yeah. Let them go. You know, you have brushes that are starting to, you know, to unravel and break off and stuff it's time to let them go don't don't keep using them and you asked me about the blow dryer earlier make sure that i have the one with the brush in is your brush in good condition the paddle brush okay okay it's the one with the paddle brush okay so as long as your brush is in good condition and like i said use the technique you know where you're doing small sections you're not trying to do real big sections at a time mm -hmm. that should help you okay and then make sure you check that heat on that blow dryer as well because that heat on that blow dryer matters okay. so a lot of times we start off with high heat on the blow dryer i actually start off with low heat and i do it i don't know if you saw how i did it but i used the blow dryer and that just kind of went up and down to kind of straighten it out and help detangle it some and get smooth it out enough so that when I did use the brush, I wasn't using the brush a whole lot. Okay. So the brush wasn't used throughout the entire time of blow drying it. So it actually was able to straighten out some before I used the brush. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Looking at this front here, mm -hmm. how much of this is split ends? I'm going to show you. Because it looks pretty bad to me. I'm going to show you. So that's that section. That was your problem section that you had concerns about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you already have concerns about just looking at, at this. You see how if you take a comb or something to go down, you can start seeing the hair where there has been breakage. Yeah. You see that? And that's not shedding. That's breakage. So it's just that's splitting how you know, upward. Exactly. So that's how you know the difference between broken hair versus shedding hair. Mm -hmm. Shedding hair comes from the root all the way from the from the scalp mm -hmm. out. So that's when you see long strands. If you see small pieces, that means it's breaking. Something is causing it to break. And that's why I said we have to find out what it is that's causing it to break. Either that it's not heat because you don't do heat. Mm -hmm. It's not braids because you don't do braids. It's been but, a while. Yeah, yeah. but you do twists. So making sure your twists are not too tight, making sure you're using the right moisturizer on your hair so yeah. that it's nice and smooth when you're doing your twist outs. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that you are using like satin bonnet, satin pillowcases, you know, satin, something that causes your hair to slide mm -hmm. instead of instead of snatching and attaching. Yeah. So and do, then, would you say I need to cut? No. Okay. And not, not right now. Not right now. <laughs> so I'm going to press it out and we're going to see what it all looks like when I... You know, once we finish, sometimes you can repair hair. You cannot always repair when it's split and broken. Okay. But sometimes if it's broken, we may be able to snip, like trim those ends and get the hair through your treatment process. We've actually done the treatment and that's why your hair is silky and smooth now because of the treatment that we've used. Okay. And it's, it's been easy to straighten out because of that as well. So we're going to do that. We're going to continue to do that here okay. and make sure that that um, we see what we can do for your final touches okay. and be able to maintain this hair. Okay. So we are going to have to cut some, but you're not going to have to cut it all the way up.
watching this video i hope that you thoroughly enjoyed it i hope that you gained a lot of tips from my stylist mr shauna and until next time don't forget to follow her on social media at tashana pritchett and also on youtube you're on youtube as well youtube under tashana pritchett all right and until next time love you guys see you later bye i've been flipping pages since i could remember that told me i had to be